This is the Akai Rhythm Wolf. I have taken it apart and am trying to reverse engineer all of the schematics so I can make fixes to it. And I hope that this will be helpful to anybody who is watching this. I am doing AB videos, so you can hear what it sounds like before and after the mods. And this is the A video. So let's listen to what it sounds like. I'll turn all the all the voices down. And the first thing you probably noticed is that a lot of the noise went away. And we'll maybe cover that as we go through each voice. So everything is down. So I'm going to bring up the master. And here is the here is the synth voice. A tune. Works as you'd expect. They put a uh, D10 pot in, which is nice. Uh, there's the cutoff. Actually, I'm going to do is I'm going to back off the envelope amount um, for this and also resonances full down as well. So. So that's full open. And full open just doesn't feel very full open to me. Also the knob doesn't doesn't feel like it covers the range very well in terms of a lot of the time is spent on the lower end. And this is it with a square wave. That was the sawtooth. So let's add in a bit of uh, resonance. And you'll notice as we get up to higher resonance, the bass note actually goes away and it's sort of just the resonance we hear. Which is a huge change in perceived volume. So we can then add in some. And also the resonance doesn't really feel like I mean that's that's full resonance and doesn't really seem like it bites very hard. So let's add in some envelope amount. Again, similar to the cutoff frequency, the envelope amount doesn't really cover a very large range. That's with it full up. We'll go back to sawtooth. And again, that volume drop with resonance. So we also have decay. So for decay, I'm going to turn the resonance and well, I guess I'll leave the envelope mod up, but we'll turn the filter drop down a little bit. So here we go with decay. I'm going to turn decay all the way down. And again, as I hold it, it holds the note. And uh, decay doesn't have, there's a sustain in there. So that's at the middle setting. Somewhat longer setting. And let's go all the way to full up. Wait for this to decay. We can talk a little bit. 
bit about uh, another aspect of this sound is that we are currently in the decay portion. I am no longer pressing the button, but you, the volume doesn't change at all. It is essentially all on, all off. The decay isn't really so much a decay as a gate. There's a short decay period, and it isn't an exponential decay. It's sort of like just literally goes, and then at the end it just cuts off. So I'm going to go a more middle range so you can hear that. And at the end it just cuts off. It doesn't fade out. So and the decay time of the envelope mod doesn't really match the decay time of the output amplitude. So they go up and down accordingly, but one stretch is a much, much larger range. So that is the synth voice on it, the bass synth. There's some okay settings inside there, but in general the pots don't cover really useful ranges. And there is also a lot of mention of the voice going out of tune, and uh, uh, there's a lot of reasons why it does that. So the next is the hi-hats. That is the closed. And then that other is the open. So on that we have tune. And I don't think I can hear any difference as I turn the tune knob. What you can hear is a difference in accent. There are three accent levels. One is no accent, and we have medium accent and high accent. And the note gets, the, the sound gets louder and has a little bit more noise, a little bit longer decay time with more accent. Uh, the synth also responds to accent and has a little bit more punch into the envelopes, both for envelope amount to the filter and for the VCA. So so that's the decay. Pretty much kills the sound. It's a weird decision to have made. And it's a little long, but it doesn't bother me too much because it sort of becomes another sound in my mind. More of, more of a cymbal and a hi-hat. But now you can start hearing the tune. tune is actually mixing between different noise sources. It's not actually changing the tune of anything. It's a little bit of a misnomer, which is why it's hard to hear on the short notes because you don't have enough of the sound present to really hear the timbre. So that is the hi-hats. The next is the percussion sound. So we have a high tune and a low tune. I'm going to take that noise out so you can hear that better. That is the high tune. That's the low tune. So these make sort of wooden block sounds. And 
with a little bit of noise sound okay, although I'm not exactly certain to be my choice in a mix. Get a little bit more of the noise with a little bit more accent. And turning the noise full up basically just makes this gated noise source, which I can't really see a and it just completely drowns out the sort of resonant filters that get pinged that create these these tones then we have the snare drum You can hear with more accent. You get a little bit more noise. You got tune. Which is okay. You can change the decay time on the noise. to something that's, again, a little ridiculous. And you can change the noise level. So again, more accent, louder, and longer. But the level is pretty darn high. So the useful range for a lot of these is, again, pretty small. And, and the noise source on the majority of these is pretty much just gated. You get the noise on, and then it goes off. There isn't a decay on the noise. All right, finally the kick drum. Not bad. Got tune. Goes pretty low. You have your decay. accent doesn't really affect it any way at all until you add attack. Attack just adds a small kick at the beginning. Oh heck, I had attack on, didn't even notice it. It's, it's kind of... Maybe the accent is a little more noticeable with shorter decays. attack, which you can hear when you have it completely cranked up, but and on really strong attacks you hear it, but on light you don't you get it kind of just at the end. So that is the full synth voice, and now we can talk about the distortion. <laughs> 